Prince Michael Grease N.O. regrets ditching throne woman found freedom, husband of celebrated artist Marina Carella has new photo memoir, Crown, Art, and Fantasy, A Life in Pictures, Prince Michael of Greece was not going to let destiny get in the way of true love. The grandson of King George I of Greece and first cousin of Britain's Prince Philip renounced his rights to the Greek throne to marry a commoner, artist Marina Carella, in 1965. They shared two daughters, Princess Alexandra and Princess Olga, as well as five grandchildren, the 84-year-old's photo memoir, Crown, Art, and Fantasy, A Life in Pictures, was published on September 12. It features more than 500 photos documenting his life and royal upbringing. The proud patriarch told Fox News Digital he's been gathering photos of his family and adventures since he was 17. To be a prince is to be like anyone but not to be considered like anyone, not by me, by the others, Michael said. People always have the wrong impression. They always imagine we have palaces, jewels, lots of money, that we do everything we want. But for us who are a former monarchy. To be frank, our titles sometimes open doors, not everywhere and not in every country. Michael's father, Prince Christopher of Greece and Denmark, died when he was just one year old. His mother, Princess Francoise of Orleans, died when he was fourteen. I have no brothers or sisters. He said. It was very hard for six months. But I think I have a sense of adaptation, which has helped me all through my life. And then, I went to live with an uncle of mine, the Count of Paris, who had twelve children. So, I went, from being a lonely child to becoming a member of a very large family. It took me six months of perhaps loneliness, sadness or whatever to adapt. Then afterward, I was very happy. Michael had no idea his life would forever change after attending a party. It was there he met Corella, who shared mutual friends with him. He said it was easy to fall in love with the young painter, now 83. I found her absolutely charming, Michael recalled. She also studied painting in Paris, my mother was French and I grew up in France. She was just so lovely and gracious with me. It didn't take long to decide that I wanted to marry her. I remember I was dancing with her at a party, and I just looked at her, Michael recalled. It was like a revelation, it was her and no one else. That was that. But I didn't tell her at once, of course. A few weeks afterward, I invited her to dinner at my house. After the dinner, I said, I'm going to marry. She said, who? And I said, you, would you like to marry me? She took two minutes to reply. She said, yes. She later told me that when she went back to her home, she thought she was totally crazy to have said yes without thinking, Michael chuckled. But in reality, she was not. It worked very well. And after all, isn't life an adventure, one that's always unexpected? Despite a whirlwind romance, the couple negotiated for two years before they were allowed to marry. According to Michael, Morganatic marriages, or valid unions between people of unequal social rank, weren't accepted at the time. They eventually won their case, and on February 7, 1965, they married at the Royal Palace in Athens. They welcomed their daughter, Alexandra, in 1968, followed by Olga in 1972. Michael said he didn't hesitate to renounce his rights to the throne. It sounds medieval, but at the time, the existing monarchy in Greece had a law which said that members of the royal family could not marry without the written consent of the head of the family. Meaning the king, he explained. I needed his approval, otherwise my marriage would have been illegal. It was complicated, but we managed. I was convinced that I would win, and I won. Renouncing this title, not being a member of a ruling monarch in official functions and everything gave me a sense of freedom. I could choose my work and my profession, which I discovered was writing in history. It gave me the freedom to choose my way. It was love at first sight, it has never, ever changed, Michael continued. Now we are married fifty-eight years. Marina and my country Greece are the same. When asked how Corella felt about his decision at the time, 
Michael joked, I don't think she was quite impressed. She knew it was important for me to be free and to choose my career, what I wanted to do, he said. She knew that in renouncing my rights to the throne, I found freedom. And she knew that she was my freedom. The other day, I told her, you gave me my freedom. And she said, Michael, you gave me my security. So, I suppose it's a good combination. And over the years, Michael has mastered the recipe for a lasting marriage. First, never be bored with your consort, he said. Laugh with your consort. Second, get a deep interest in each other's activities. She takes a deep interest in my writing, I take a deep interest in her paintings. And we talk about them. But the pepper I add is, if you want to have a successful marriage, always keep one small part of mystery in you. So, your consort knows 99% of you but not 100%. That is my recipe. Perhaps it's not for everyone. King Constantine II was Greece's last king before the monarchy was abolished in 1973, People magazine reported. According to the outlet, his descendants still represent the country as princes and princesses. Over the years, Corella has led a successful career as a painter while Michael became a writer and historian. They traveled the world and, at one point, lived in New York for 12 years. They now live in Greece and run their foundation, Eliza, which aims to protect children from abuse. Michael is related to monarchies. Both current and defunct, in the UK, Denmark, France, Spain and Romania, Town Amp, Country reported. His cousin, Philip, was Britain's longest living consort. He died in 2021 at age 99. Michael said he doesn't envy the British monarchy in particular and the weight that has fallen on King Charles III's shoulders. Charles, 74, became king upon the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, in 2022. She was 96. Today, the job of a ruling monarchy is not an easy job, he explained. You are under the press scrutiny with the internet and everything. You can't move without it being known. Everything can be recorded. And, it is very difficult for anyone to be the successor of Queen Elizabeth. I don't know if he's perfect or not, said Michael, referring to Charles. What I know is that he can hardly do better than what he does now. I think he does his best. Queen Camilla, too. It's very difficult. I do not envy him at all, really, poor guy. And he does it with dedication, with a sense of humor. She, too. But I would not like that job at all. Michael said he hopes his book will inspire others to pursue their dreams, whatever they may be. I see so many families in difficult situations today, fighting each other, hating each other, said Michael. I created my own family, whom I adore, my wife, children and grandchildren. That is the most important thing for me. My life has been one of experiences, of discoveries. And I'm still very curious. Now, I'm discovering technology through my grandchildren. It's fabulous. My life has been an adventure. It still is.